I'm Jay Horton. I make movies that make money, and this is Filmmakers On. Sales agents often get a bad rap amongst filmmakers, and deservedly so. Today, I'm talking to one of the good ones, John Kim. He's a very successful sales agent, and he's going to drop a ton of knowledge on us about profitable genres for indie films, distribution, marketing, and a ton of other good stuff. So strap in and let's do the interview thing. Um, do you consider yourself a sales agent? <laughs> I knew you were going to come up with that. Yes. I don't have a label. I, I sell movies. That's what I do. So, you know, sales agent, distributor, aggregator, all this stuff. Everyone has a different definition. If you get 10 people, they're going to all say, you know, 10 different things. And, and the people that are doing it, they like to they like that ambiguity because they get away with more stuff, but straight up, all I do is sell movies. That's all I do. And whether it's, you know, selling out of my trunk, but oh, yeah. that's, Speak. that's what I do. I mean, I don't do anything else other than, than sell movies. I'm not upcharging and I'm not doing anything, you know, but so that's, that's the quick answer or the long answer, but I just sell movies, movies and TV shows. You know, no labels. You no, know, it's <laughs> just cool. like labels are just killing it. TVOD, SVOD, a you know, all the MPVD. Everyone just has all these, you know, black. They're trying to create a confusing because it is a little club, period. Mm -hmm. and, totally. and 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 the more ambiguity, the better it is to to for deception. <laughs> I mean, this isn't like selling houses. You know, selling houses, everyone can look up in Zillow and see how much was the going rate for next to the street. You know, mm -hmm. but in movies, it's a black box and that's part of the problem. That's why there is so much uh, uh, ripped offs and deception all because no one knows. And anyone that's, yeah. you know, that's that's the main and that's actually the main reason why, you know, I, 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 I tell people it's like, hey, you know, I, I've, I could sell my house on my own, but that is mm -hmm. I don't there's stuff I have no idea about. And I would much rather pay a commission to the best selling, one of the best selling real estate agents who knows, you know, what the going rate is, who has access to, to people with money who can buy, knows all the right people. Other than that, I, I mean, it's, that's why I never sell, you know, my own house. And it's the same thing with movies and TV shows because, you know, because of that, there is no information really out there other than a lot of people making up stuff. Oh, I got the six figures from Netflix and all this stuff. I say, yeah, right. And when it, everybody brags about that and nobody is showing the actual statement of what they got, because, you know, as you and I both know, it's, 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 uh, it's a lot bigger and better in the in the trade magazine than, than in reality. Oh, I got a, a title in Walmart. Oh, you know, I mean, back in the day, they weren't talking about the million dollars of returns, you know, a, a year later. Mm -hmm. the same thing they're talk, not talking about, you know, the 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 deal that they got at, 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 at some of the best platforms out there. People are shocked when it's when they find out how little it really is. So John, how, how long, how long have you been selling movies? How long have you been involved in distribution? I've been selling movies for almost 20 years. I started at Disney. So I was mm -hmm. actually selling to Walmart and Target and Best Buy and converting, you know, vault Disney libraries from VHS to, to DVD. I grew that. And then I, I moved to Paramount where I ran the uh, catalog business there as well. And then I was, uh, I ran the, the digital uh, sales group at Paramount. And then when, uh, when my number came up as it, as it does, then I converted to the indie side of things and I was at Anderson digital. And that's why I, that's where I learned the run and gun of the indie world. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a lot different uh, world than, than major studio world. Uh, but totally when, for, for yeah. people that don't know, can, can you explain what Anderson was? Anderson digital was, uh, <laughs> was a digital aggregator. Mm -hmm. uh, that had thousands and thousands of, of movies and TV shows and had the contracts with all the major platforms and was just, you know, loading up movies uh, for indie, indie, distribu indie, indie producers. Mm -hmm. And so when that got uh, bought by Alchemy and then that whole disaster happened and, you know, people lost their, their, their money, their movies, et cetera, mm -hmm. that's when I started to start my own uh distribution company four years ago and ever since then it's been my you know my final dream come true and you know 30 years of corporate misery because i was at nabisco and mattel before that right. finally now i you know i've just let loose and uh i finally found my my reason for being and 
as far as the job goes and everything. So it's just been a, a miracle. I know exactly what you mean. There, there is, there is nothing, there's nothing like working for yourself, like, you know, calling your own shots after years and years and years of being under other people's thumbs, you know, whether it's corporate or freelance or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm 20 times happier, you know, now doing my own thing than I was working for other people. I wish sometimes I think, Oh man, I wish I had this, you know, 20 years ago, but then, mm -hmm. you know, I, I realized I could have never done this if I didn't go through that experience, getting those relationships and just learning yep. the processes and, and knowing what it takes and truly, you know, I, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, it's, 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 it's much easier to go from uh, rags to riches than riches to rags. Oh, and totally. Yeah. And so now, you know, I, I used to wake up at five in the morning every day and just God give me the strength to get to work. You know, now <laughs> it's like, you know, if I wake up at five morning, it's like what new miracle is going to happen? Because it, it's just been a miracle after a miracle having my own business like this. So you started your own thing about four years ago. Four years um, ago. Which um, it, it's funny because I like that's a really um, as far as the distribution industry goes, that's kind of a I won't say an odd time, but a really it's a, it's a different uh, difficult time, you know, because like we were kind of transitioning from, you know, where DVD sales were really high, like streaming was really just kind of coming into its own. Like, like, what was it like uh, working through that transition? When I was at Paramount, I was in that inflection point of, of of trying to convert our, you know, our Blu-rays at the time onto, onto digital transaction with the iTunes, et cetera, the world. Back then, that was probably about seven years ago. And, and you know, all the press was of, oh, digital, digital revolution, all that. And, you would, and by reading all the press, you would, have, you would have thought that, you know, total sales of digital would have been the majority of sales. But even at that time, it was less than 20% of all studio sales versus mm -hmm. DVD and Blu-ray. And so when I transitioned over to the independent side of things, that was another inflection point between uh, TVOD, transactional video and sales, and, and now just the, the whole AVOD, the mm -hmm. AVOD revolution. So yeah. I was very, very thankful that four years ago, I managed to get new contracts and new relationships with all the major platforms, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a different world. When I was at Paramount, for example, literally I, I would not want to take a meeting with, with AdRise, which was Tubi at the time. Mm -hmm. And because, oh, you know, the bottom of the barrel, oh, it's free, average, you know, free is this, you know, after the life cycle, like after, you know, everything's been done mm -hmm. to uh, dial it back now, seven years later. And, you know, I got three kids now, but if I had another kid, I'd name him Tubi because <laughs> of the amount of sales that Tubi has generated. <laughs> I really, it's been incredible. And, and that the tipping point where, I mean, it was, even four years ago, back to your original question, sorry, it was that, you know, I was cheerleading and trying to show people how, you know, advertising video on demand was, was, was what consumers want. I mean, people mm -hmm. really don't realize that, you know, in the hybrid world of, of AVOD, SVOD, even at, at, at Hulu, 75% of the customers are coming on the AVOD side. That's not information that people really don't know. And that's mm -hmm. actually the information that, that studios uh, would want to, not just people know because that's the entire dagger to to their whole ecosystem you know because mm -hmm. i mean it's still a it's still it's still a 20 dollars cpm check versus you know six seven figures of days you know just just a while ago mm -hmm. so so i was cheerleading big time on avod got all those contracts and thank goodness i did because it was easy back then when everyone was laughing at it but now mm -hmm. they ain't laughing Right now, all of a sudden, all every headline in the in the world is about you know how everyone's a genius doing AVOD this and that, and I'm like, yeah, right. Look at all my charts where I showed you know exact time comparisons, you know of, of AVOD at launch versus digital. That, I mean, PVOD at launch, and it's like a minimum of five x more. I'm talking mm -hmm. not, I'm talking indie product, non star power, non uh, you know big studio budget, but it's right. you know it's five to hundred x right. But mm -hmm. now. And so now people are all trying to join that bandwagon and, and thank goodness that I got in early and now people are trying to call them and say, Hey, I got this great content, but they're, they're getting pushed back and saying, sorry, you know, you got great content, but you need at least a hundred titles. You know, why don't you come meet, you know, go to John, you know, it's yep. digital. Right. And so, 
again, that's been yet another miracle. I mean, you know, our sleazy industry, everyone's stealing money, but, you know, instantly my credibility is, is, is way up when, you know, you got the platforms recommending me, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how I get tons and tons of business and clients. I have over 120 clients. I have hundred percent retention because, because it's just basics. I answer phone calls. I pay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the bar is low. Unfortunately, you know, it, probably of my hundred client, hundred plus clients, uh, 90% of them have been burned at least twice even. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, they're just kind of in shock when, when I just bear, do the bare bones basics, you know, of just humanity, basic humanity of calling, paying on time, you know, and mm -hmm. doing the right thing and just saying what you're going to uh, do, what you're going to say. So it has been like a perfect, perfect storm of, of, of all the right things that have just kind of aligned itself behind my business. And it's just been incredible when a filmmaker comes to you like uh, what like what specifically like so you're repping the films you're you're taking them out you're selling them the platforms like like how does that work i only work on a commission basis period so there in, isn't any kind of you know social media plan making or you know setup plan or you know editing or i don't make any money with you know i par I, I partner out with a bunch of labs i don't make any money on you know on, on editing or anything like that I straight mm -hmm. up look at a film and then, you know, I, I, I look and see if I can sell it. If it's going to make, you know, five figures, if it's not going to make five figures, I can't take on your movie, period. Nobody's, nobody's happy if, if it doesn't make five figures. And, and, you know, unfortunately, if, if, a, if a producer has an expectation or hope of, of, of more than, you know, five figures, and I know that it's not there, then, then I don't want to ever take on something where I can't, you know, where I don't feel in a good bet that I can exceed expectations. So mm -hmm. I'll just look at it and I'll look at it, you know, I'll see, I, because I sold thousands of these, I can look straight up and say, you know, what, what is the potential SVOD money, TVOD money, if we should even go TVOD, by the way, mm -hmm. and then what is right. the AVOD, right? So, so yeah, I'm, I'm probably saying no at a ratio of 10 to one now, because mm -hmm. it's, it's just a waste of time for the producer and for me, if, if, if I don't think I can sell it, right? right. And, and also, you know, my contract, I got to put a time frame on it. I put a year on it. Unlike a lot of con you know contracts where I've seen like five to ten years or whatever, yeah. my contract oh, is basically yeah. My contract is basically if you're not happy, you know, in, in four months, then that means I'm not happy because I'm not selling it, and and we should part ways, right? right. Is I'm not going to hold anyone hostage to anything because mm -hmm. I like I said I'm not being paid by the hour or education. You know, I could I give seminars, give you know talks about you know about this you know, the complicated little, you know, world of distribution, but I'm not paid by the hour. I don't do consulting. You know, mm -hmm. I'll consult like if I know exactly, I mean, what I know is going to sell. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you're preaching to the choir right here talking about uh, AVOD and stuff. But I mean, as you know, talk, dealing with filmmakers, there's a there's a lot of pushback, yeah. um, especially amongst some older indie filmmakers, you know, that remember, you know, yeah. you know, doing a DVD deal in 2012 where they made, you know, 75K on it or whatever. And, you know, now they're like, you know, how, like, how can AVOD, you know, possibly compete when I need to have whatever, a thousand people watch it to get, you know, this CPM. And then, you know, I could sell a DVD for $12 and, right. and make that so, up. What, what do you say to them? It's a new day, unfortunately the days of you know a single check just paying the whole you know college tuition every et cetera et cetera getting a you know easy money from dvd easy money from a big netflix those days are well over unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, and there is you know there was that huge stigma about um avod ad sport and everything but that stigma has has really um gone away and by the way it it's back to the future I mean, when we were watching Cheers and Friends and, and you know, that was all ad supported for crying out loud. It was free, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just returning back to that day. And, and, and the industry, you know, producers, filmmakers, we can all fight it if we want to, but that's what consumers want. And, and so, I mean, that's the gravity. So the only way you're gonna beat gravity is to, be, is to create, you know, something as anti-gravity, which is like a Game of Thrones. You know, mm -hmm. you spend you spend ten million dollars per episode. Okay, so that will be a premium. People want to pay for that. However, you know, people are still getting Game of Thrones for free pirating. They're also getting free using passwords. You know that that numbers those numbers aren't published, but those are significant, 
right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, you can bury your head in the sand and remember the day and everything, or you can kind of live and adapt and, you know, make money. And, and you know, I tell filmmakers, you know, do you, do you want, you know, are, do you want headlines? You want variety headlines? You want cachet? You want to be invited to a launch party? If that's what you think, that's not me. I just want, that doesn't pay the rent. I want to pay the rent. And, you know, <laughs> the, and, and now that AVOD inflection point has happened, where not only the stigma is gone, but set, my customers made seven figures just in Q4 alone on, on, on the collective AVOD platform, seven figures collectively, right? And, and so that, and it's not even started. I mean, because of the COVID, all of a sudden, you know, the, the, you know, the usual adaption of technology is, is, is the, the young whippersnappers and, you know, the mm-hmm. gamers, because they understand that. And so you'll always, see, you'll always see that. That was DVD that happened with digital. And then the, the family comes in later because, you know, because they're just later adopters, they don't need it. You know, DVD was still high tech, you know, in, in, in the heartland, mm-hmm. right? But with COVID, that fa- those families are now discovering uh, AVOD and the opportunities, not just because they got the free time, but because mm-hmm. they don't have enough wallet. They're losing jobs. They're losing it. I can't afford, you know, 10 different SVOD services. So, the, I mean, that's why you're reading in all the press of like triple digit, you know, viewership increases. And mm-hmm. now also with the advertisers seeing that, you know, they got to chase where the eyeballs are and the, eyeball, the eyeballs are there. And it's just, it's not ever going to go back. I, you know, I, I can show them, you know, five, six, fi- five, six figure uh, checks that are by, you know, some of the types of titles I'm getting. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, I'm not, in the, I'm not in the world of trying to convince anyone, you know, to, to join my service. You right. Know, it's like, if you feel like you can do make your money elsewhere, I tell them, please do that because, you know, I'm planning out my, my, my rest of my 30 years of life and I wanted yeah. to make it good. And I don't need that stress of anyone jamming down my throat, you know, or trying to, you know, I say, I, I say no quite a bit. I've said mm-hmm. no to hundreds of thousands of dollars because, you know, for me, life is too short. I just want to keep this thing going. I want to pass this on to my kid, you know, mm-hmm. or kids. That's why I'm, I'm liberated out of that studio world where, you know, you have to pretend you're, it's all pretending that the emperor, you know, is, is, has, has beautiful clothes when he's buck naked. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, yeah. Hey, now I'm free. I can say, you know what? Unfortunately, the emperor, you have no clothes, but I can give you some underwear. I can give you some gloves. You're going to be warm. And I'm not going to pretend otherwise, you know, it's not like we're in the studio world days. It was like, Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And then a year later, it all goes, Oh, whose fault was that? Right. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't live in that. I, I mean, it's just the de- definition of stress and anxiety right there. But now it's like, look, I just call it straight as I see it. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't want to hear the truth, then then you don't want to talk to me because I'm just going to tell you the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. And so let's let's talk a few like uh, like general like a- AVOD number for some independent stuff. So if if a filmmaker came and they had a say a you know, thirty-five to fifty thousand dollar independent film with no major stars, but it's it's well put together. They picked a good genre. They're good at marketing. Like they they have all their ducks in a row, pretty good. What are some like like general amounts they might could expect from AVOD in the first year? And I know it goes it's all really the really tough. And I you know one other thing is I don't I don't like giving estimates. And the reason I don't mm. get like estimates is because you know. It can, I, I don't, again, don't ever want to be like, like feeling like I'm trying to get somebody in because I've given a high estimate or, or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But certainly, totally. the, when you talk about the right, it's got to be the right genre. And right now, mm-hmm. the right genre is black cinema or, or, or family and faith, faith ish. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, those are the, the weak, kind of the Achilles heel that, that, that Netflix and some of these platforms, you know, were, were a little bit less developed. And that's actually right. how I grew my business. You know, I, 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 I am in tight with all of those family and faith SVODs mm-hmm. and all of the black SVODs. I mean, 30 or 50,000, you, you can actually get away with, you know, making somewhat of a decent movie if, if you know, you know, all the, all the, uh, the tricks 
as far yeah. as being able to, you know, get, get, get your friend, you know, Kevin Sobo or, you know, even a Snoop Dogg to just show up for the day or something like that. So do you, do you still say that? I, cause I know um, that there was a long time, especially like 2012, 2014, where a lot of, I, you know, I was working for a lot of these guys where, you know, we would cast, you know, B ish level name actors. We'd have them for a couple of days. They'd be in maybe 20% of the movie. Like you're saying that that's still a good, uh, a, a good model. It's a very good model because okay. in this world of thousands and thousands of choices, mm -hmm. consumers, you know, they have ADD and, you know, by the way, when they're looking at the computer, it, it's, you know, these postage stars stamps, you know, and if they don't know your movie and they're searching for a movie, the only thing that's going to pop is something they recognize, which is a star. Mm -hmm. Right. And so okay. that, you know, that should be the number one <laughs> budget <laughs> item is to get someone in charge. Cause then you put up, it doesn't even matter if they're in the end credits, you put them on the cover and uh -huh. that will get you some sales right there. Right. right. And so, yes, it's, it's even more important. I mean, we all know that just because, you know, an Academy award winner is on the package, it doesn't mean it's a good movie, but you know mm -hmm. what, you know, that Academy award winner isn't going to be participating in, you know, some schlock house or some little 12 year old kids video. So it's yeah. a surrogate for, oh, it must have, you know, high production value. And that's, that is the mindset of, of, of SVOD buyers. The first thing mm -hmm. they ask is who's in it, because right. that is their way of just kind of filtering out all the noise, you know, because mm -hmm. we wouldn't have enough time in the day, you know, buyers at platforms or even consumers to, to really look at every thousand, you know, up to thousands of different selections. Our brains can't even take it. So what's the best mm -hmm. way to put who's in it? Okay, so that just gets out, you know, 80% of the clutter right there, right? right? And so to get in that clutter, I mean, outside that clutter, you better have some superstar packaging that, you know, I have titles that have no stars and they have just mm -hmm. killer packaging. And right. that is the Super Bowl advertising. That's another huge line item that, that a lot of producers don't realize is is everything because right. you know if if, it's, if someone has to tell me you know oh it's this great story it's the best story it's about this and this and that you lost me in, in, in it's a great story <laughs> it's like who, who's in it you know what's the genre bam 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 and it's done right i mean you know i tell this story to to to, to a lot of people because i mean bless producer soul i mean hearts because they gave their their they're a chunk of their flesh to get mm. something made, to get it, yeah. to get it produced, to get it, you know, could take a couple of years to get convinced someone to give them money to produce it. I mean, this is what, this is their life. In some cases, their life, so it's mortgage their house, you know? And so it is their more than their life project in some cases. Right. But unfortunately, mm. just because they did that doesn't mean that, you know, a complete stranger even cares, unfortunately. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So it's really hard to like disassociate yourself from that and just hear, you know, very objective feedback and say, mm -hmm. look, you know, because that's what it is. No one cares how much you spend on it, whatever. No one, everyone's heard, you know, something's the greatest movie ever seen, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, this, this stinks. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm done being emotionally invested in any of my movies. It's like, you know, I, I'm done. I've I cried about movies and thought it was the greatest work ever, and I can't sell a thing. Then I'm like mm -hmm. embarrassed on some movies and just pass it on and selling hundreds of thousands of dollars, <laughs> right? One man's treasure is another man's junk. So unfortunately, yep. and and you know there, a lot of these products are really substitutable. Unfortunately, I hate to be a you know, yeah, say that, but you know again, I, 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 grizzled grizzled veteran of you know thousands, seeing thousands of movies and and being you know of seeing like it doesn't matter what i really even think or how it's affected it's like objectively what is on here that's got the assets to sell mm -hmm. right so that's that's uh it, to, to be able to to divorce yourself you know your great the producer's greatest strength of of, of doggedness determination getting it done no matter what can be his mm -hmm. greatest weakness because he can't see any any other way you know, how it might be positioned differently, how it might be sold. Would you rather make six figures in AVOD or would you rather make, you know, $10,000 for a, you know, a great Netflix deal? <laughs> like I said, right. you know, there's a cachet and a cash, that cachet is certainly good for a first time filmmaker. But you mm -hmm. know what, quite frankly, I don't, I don't like to have a first time filmmaker because, you know, it, it, they don't know, know what they don't even know. 
mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. And 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 I and I, it's 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 just too time consuming, and and it's trying to teach, trying to tell a fish what it's like to live on the on the land. Quite honestly, mm -hmm. unless you've experienced it, you don't know what it's like. So I like to take on uh, producers that have multiple films that have seen how devastating and hard it is. 90% of my clients have been burned and not paid, you know, six figures or more. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's terrible out there. And, you know, I, I comb my hair like this and someone thinks I'm bringing out a gun or something. <laughs> that's the way they've been trained. People have been trained in our industry. Yeah. Right. So that's why my, my business is basically a hundred percent from, from the existing platforms or from, from producers just saying, Hey, you got to go with Johnny. You're not going to get screwed over. You got to have an AVOD component. And then, and then, you know, you got to upsell them up into premium content, you know, whether it's exclusive original content or, or exclusively licensed content, you got to give a reason for a consumer, you know, who is, who's already paying out the gills for Netflix and for Disney plus, right. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty much kind of in the bag already. So anything on top of that, you know, it's got to, you got to bring it. Otherwise you ain't going to get it. Right. Right. So that is the reality of, of, of all these SVOD wannabes and everything. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I, you know, I'm glad that I've now gotten to the size where, where I do have a couple hundred of titles and now people like off the street, you know, just from LinkedIn, people are just saying, Hey, you know, I have a platform. I, you know, I get, I get so, so maybe four or five times a week and it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, you can rev share and you know we're on roku box and we're on my it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> my my partners my producing partners are not yeah. going to give you their child their you know their baby so that you can grow your your service right you know and unfortunately it's like you know oh i'm gonna have a million users and and back to your earlier question you know the math just doesn't work even if you get mm -hmm. a million users it's you're gonna at the end of the day you're gonna make 50 bucks you know, right. at most because of the CPM rates, you know, and people don't realize that. So, you know, to get so, so for for people out there, because there's a lot of filmmakers out there that don't understand what uh, CPM is. They don't understand that if I component, could you explain? Yeah, that yeah. So CPM is an advertising term and it simply cost per thousand. So every every uh, uh, a CPM rate is you, you, you for every thousand impressions how many, how much, how many dollars do you make in the high end, mm -hmm. you know, in the high end of some of these AVOD platforms, it could be like 20 bucks per thousand. So you can make $20 for every thousand impressions. And the mm -hmm. nice thing about the 20, you know, impression base versus kind of an Amazon prime where everyone's, you know, complaining that, you know, penny per hour, you got to watch <laughs> an hour to get paid a penny, right? right? That's some hard work. And, and by the way, just, just, you know, sell some lemonade on the street, you're going to make more money than that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and with, yeah. so at least with the CPM, it's an impression. So all you got to do is you get paid, even if your, your ad runs and then you go, you know, the consumer goes to the fridge or the bathroom and runs, you're going to get paid. You're not getting paid to wait for him to keep the TV on for an hour to get to your penny. Mm -hmm. You know, at least, you know, with CPM, you, you, you have a chance to make more money. And with these platforms like IMDb, like Tubi, you know, Roku, you know, they've done the heavy lifting and they have, you know, between 30 to 50 million people just coming to their site and looking. So if mm -hmm. you do the math, you know, you have a much ch higher chance of making money of getting a portion of those 30 to 50 million to watch your thing versus you starting up your own channel, you know, and getting, you know, a million users because even a million, which is significant, it took it took some of the, you know, the biggest headline platforms like 10 years to get a million users. Yeah. Right? I mean, to be, you know, like I said, to be, I want to name my kid because of what it's generated for my family and fed them and everything. You know, it right. took him, it took him 12 years to get 33 million users, 12 years. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. a lot of work. And, 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 you know, granted it's just skyrocketing since the COVID, but you know, most people building their own little platform, you know, mymovies.com, et cetera, et cetera. They don't have that kind of infrastructure to, you know, to get, you know, 33 million in 12 years. It could take 10 right. lifetimes. Right? Right, right. So that's, that's the reality of, of how difficult it is or to get people to just continually come to your site and see what's new. And, you know, unless it's family product, 
most consumers, they watch it once and they're done. It's like, okay, feed me more. That's where mm -hmm. someone like me comes into play because like, okay, here, here's some dessert, here's some candy, here's some whatever. So I can constantly refill the bucket. If you only have one right, movie right. and you're just one movie.com, <laughs> you got it once and then you got to find a new person to reflect that. And if you gave a, you know, a free movie promotion or you can check out my site for a week, it's like, thank you very much. You gave me a week to look at every single one of your products. Now I ain't going to pay for, another, for a subscription. That is right. the reality of the situation. That's why it's a money pit and you just got to keep on like replenishing unless it's a mm -hmm. child product, you know, Disney. And that's why Disney plus, you know, and this because kids watch it 20, 50 times, whatever, you know, but mm -hmm. most adults aren't going to watch, you know, a suspense movie and they know the outcome more than once unless, you know, for some per particularly strong reason. Right. Right. right, right. So the DAC is stacked, you know, the DAC is stacked. However, you know, you, that's why you need someone, you know, someone that knows how to navigate that, 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 you know, the stack deck and actually make you some money. You know, right. I, I feel, you know, at, you know, in this day and age of, 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 you know, jobs going to India and outsourcing and AI and everything, you know, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable that I got to, that, that this, that this, this dream can still live is because the computer can't replace, you know, relationships. They cannot replace relationships, right? And they can't replace, you know, just just the the the, the wheeling and dealing of of that among friends, you know. Because I have all friends in history, I have access to hundreds and hundreds of movies, not even just mine, right? Or mm -hmm. because I have, that's why I sub distribute for a lot of other companies, likewise, right? Mm -hmm. So because I'm strong in black and family and faith, and I have a lot of these AVOD um, accounts, for example. I'll have other distributors, big distributors that you know, <laughs> that will, you know, they're like, you know, it's going to take me 10 years to, to get that contract, to get that relationship. I'd much rather give it to John. We can split the, we split the commission and I get a sale. My consumers, you know, get my clients get a sale because it's client. They wouldn't have got business without, without me giving it to John. Again, it's all legal. It's all contractual. That cannot be replicated from a machine just placing you know titles on every platform right, right and right. so that that's where i feel good about you know basically there's only 40 platforms in the entire world that have any meaningful money where mm -hmm. where a producer can actually you know make some money real money on their films right? right and unfortunately there's only a handful of people that actually have access have that key to the to that locked door Right. Yeah. And that's just the reality. So that's why, you know, even if you have an Academy Award film, it is hard to get in that door. You need someone mm -hmm. like me who's a trusted person who can like open that door, unfortunately. And I, that's why I'm so thankful that I'm like one of the few, it's a small circle that have access. And, and the reason I tell, you know, people understand that is, is like, and I put it in an analogy of like, you know, if you're making a movie, like how much time do you have to every time make a new movie and just like, you know, solicit, you know, 10 of the best, you know, photographers, you know, 10 of the best screen. It's like, you just have some people you just trust and want to go to and then bam, bam, make that happen. Cause you can't spend all your day just sourcing for new, for new uh, partners and new, you know, whatever every day. Cause you would never get anything done. So mm -hmm. on the flip side, it's that is a reality of these platforms, right? They can't, they can't spend, you know, hours upon hours trying to create new relationship, new contracts, new delivery methods, you know, with 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 a lot of different people because it's inefficient. But if they can funnel it, you know, through through a handful of people that they trust, they know who knows the system, who knows, you know, everything is an Academy Award seven figure thing and all that renegotiation stuff. It's just easier for them, and that's why you know you, you have to go with a a, a preferred you know, uh, distributor, I guess, if we're going to some terms, that's one advice that I would give is if you're, if you're asking, you know, you need, you need to know like, okay, so what, what is the relationship, true relationship you have, you know, with these, with these platforms, it's not like, Hey, I know the janitor and, you know, the janitor can flip it, you know, <laughs> in the bathroom <laughs> when he sees right, the right. buyer, you know what I'm saying? You want someone to just pick up the phone and get an instant answer. You know, I have that with a lot of these pay cable companies and, and in my business, you know, a quick no is second only to a yes, because to yes. know, like it's gone, then you move on. There's some of this, you know, people think they're being nice by, you know, you know, oh yeah, it's good. When, when they really have no intention whatsoever and just delay things for months. Mm -hmm. Right. But so you need to have someone that has a quick, quick phone call. I can say, yep, I can do this. It's in or it's not. It's like, you know, forget about it. Cause then you can adapt. 
mm-hmm. right? But it's it's that live relationship that you just need. Otherwise, it's just you know, it, it's it's like putting your home on on the internet and hope people come by and find it. Does windowing uh, figure into your strategies? Oh, absolutely. Like a, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, like, so, a, could you give me? Yeah, how does that work? It's all relative, but for a strong, you know, almost theatrical, there is. Uh, there is a windowing. I mean, you know, I just launched, you know, a Pure Flix title, uh, Finding Love in Quarantine. You know, I'm windowing that. You know, it's it's going to cable, you know, direct TV, in demand, and it's going iTunes, and it's transactional. It's got Lee Majors. It's got Eva LaRue. It's got, uh, it's got some, you know, serious star power, right? It's got Tom mm-hmm. Arnold in it, right? So that's like, okay, people pay for that. So that's, a, right. you know, that's a, the, the TVOD window for sure. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then you also sell that after, you know, try to find a platform buyer and, and, you know, the platform buyers don't, they'll, they'll, they're on the hunt, you know, they need, if they're, they need good content and, and they'll pay for it if it's, if it's exclusive and it's got some name brands in there. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then after that, then, yeah, then AVOD, I mean, AVOD, you know, you, it, AVOD is now a good time, but you know, it's going to be even bigger if we wait. And so, yeah, right. I, I try to maximize every window as possible, but, you know, for a, for a title that, you know, has no marketing money that has no star power and it's, you know, I'll go, I'll say, you know, I'll tell, tell them, you know, forget the, forget the TVA, don't go to direct TV. You're not going to make the, your money back on just the delivery costs alone. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. again, it's not, it, I'm not trying to, dismiss you know the tie it's just this is reality so you can you can still make good money going straight to straight to uh avod right and then also because i have the relationships you know i can talk about you know getting exclusive uh placement you know multiple placements in the in in the platform you know that's how you get the you know only free on you know x platform or that's how you get not on netflix that doesn't happen by just some automated machine just kind of placing it that happens on a negotiation saying hey man this is a good title you know and and and, you know if we go you know exclusive window of a month you know will Mm you well you know what 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 can you what can we get and you know more placements multiple placements that equals more sales because Mm -hmm. again even on the avod even on these avod platforms they're all fighting, you know, they're fighting for the same content too. So that's why you're seeing more and more like exclusives. Right. Right. But so you, so it's possible if, a, if, if a title was really strong, if they really liked it, somebody like Tubi might possibly do an exclusive oh, yeah. through someone like you. And oh, yeah, absolutely. so somehow that uh, the CPM then would be higher or you'd work out a different deal on that. No, not on the actual rate. I mean, that's a uh-huh. market rate, you know, right. Right. But where the, where the influence is, you know, you know, like, for example, I had a Cheech Marin movie and he's got 3 million social media fans. You know, he's big. I mean, mm-hmm. so I, I said, OK, uh, if, if, if we if if Cheech tweets that to his Instagram fans, you know, only available on X, you know, what what can that, you know, translate to as far as extra placement, you know, mm-hmm. only, you know, extra placement. So it's an exchange. Right. Gotcha. But that's again that the computers don't do that. Right. Mm-hmm. And again, it, that doesn't get granted for everything. I mean, but the currency, the currency in the in, in pretty much every platform is, you know, they're not going to say, hey, you give me ten thousand dollars and you get this place and you get that place. That just doesn't happen. It hasn't happened. iTunes happens anywhere because they're trying to be a, you know, a, a, a free market, you know, <laughs> without being a monopolistic market. But mm-hmm. the currency is not cash, but it's stuff like that. Is like, hey, I, this has got a social media cast of, of, of mi- X hundreds of thousands or millions or whatnot. And we will do an exclusivity message, you know, only available at, at Tubi or XYZ or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And then in return, you can get good placement and then more placement where consumers can find your product because that's half the battle. You know, half the battle is just being lost in the clutter. And to get mm-hmm. through that clutter, you know, there's exceptional packaging that just pops out of the sea of, you know, boxes or, you know, a, a strong, you know, message from a big influencer saying, hey, watch my movie here, and then boom. And so that's the currency. What, what, is, what are your thoughts on, uh, on Prime Video Direct, on Amazon opening up the, the doors uh, to everybody a few years ago? As everyone has painfully been uh, seeing over the last two years, you know, the rates have been cut and cut and cut, and now it's like a penny per hour. It's like, how can you make money? Mm. You know, behind the big strategic box of Amazon, the reason they've been doing this is because they've been building out, you know, IMDb, 
mm-hmm. right? And IMDb is there is their Tubi. It's their way of actually accessing all this advertising money available. Right. And he's talking about IMDb TV, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So because, you know, before with prime, it was just a, it was just an add on. Thank you very much for being an Amazon prime shopper, Mm -hmm. you know, and they knew that, okay, because an Amazon shop prime shopper who pays, you know, what, what, 90, hundred bucks a year or whatever, we know Mm -hmm. that they're going to spend, you know, 30, 40% more on their goods. So let's give them as a yet another reason to, to join Amazon Prime and give them free video. But, you know, the, they're paying out billions and billions of dollars to, you know, to the, to the self, in, uh, to, to actual for licensing fees for some of those bigger titles, mm-hmm. but also to all of the thousands of people just uploading their content. Yeah. So, you know, the business manager on, on Amazon Prime is like, He's not so happy because you look at his PL and he's like, I'm minus a billion, six billion dollars, right? Hey, but the greater Amazon, com- you know, the company is doing great, which is, you know, they're very strategic looking at an entire basket. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you had your own business unit, it, it, it's like, fire this guy minus six billion dollars right right so and then they're seeing on the sideline just how big everybody else so what they've done is they've created imdb tv and no one even knows about it yeah you know, even in our industry right but the i thing got about a lot it, of confusion about it a lot of confusion right it took me two years to get to get that into that that business, that contract, you know, cause first they had to take care of all of the big, you know, studios and everything. And then mm-hmm. they reached out to the next level of people like me with several hundred titles. Right. But now they're in, you know, now they're in the game and, you know, but the thing is it's completely different business model than they're used to, which is, you know, everyone uploading. The nice thing is you can upload your own stuff on IMDb. I mean, those that have the account. Yeah, on Prime but Video. You have to, yeah, the Prime Video. I mean, it's just a checkbox, you know, for yeah. someone like me at Prime, or whatever. You can't do both. It's certainly right. one or the other. Yeah, yeah. But 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 for for your average filmmaker, they're not going to be able can't to have access to IMDb yeah. TV. They can't. They have no yeah. access, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so I mean, this is their 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 way of of, and also you need to get approval, right? Yeah. So it's it's actually a pitch process. Yeah, it's curated. It's curated. So, you know, it's, it's, so you need someone like me to get in there, to pitch it, to get accepted. And, you know, because it's different, like actually people are reviewing, it takes some time. Yeah. And but guys, I, just oh, for, just for context here, guys, you know, he, he has over a hundred titles and he, you know, was able to get a relation and he, it took him a little bit of time to do that. I have over 35 titles in my library and IMDb TV would not talk to me. Like if I'm doing IMDb TV, I'm going through John or somebody like him or a distributor. Or yeah. A Unfortunately, again, like I was talking about before, there's there's only a certain, you know, certain um, pastures that, that that are available and, and you got to You got to have a key. Unfortunately, you know, it's a limited key, like mm-hmm. I said, because it's just you can't give out the key to everybody. <laughs> I mean, if you do, then you're then 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 you're down to the penny an hour prime video you know, directly. So it's curated. It's curated. But I can tell you, you know, Amazon, you don't mess with Amazon. I mean, you know, we were just talking about some of the numbers of, you know, of some of these platform taking, you know, 10 years or more to get to, you know, 30, 30 million plus. Mm-hmm. Amazon just turns on its little engine and, it, you know, they've already got 40 million users in less than a year and a half. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So, I mean, they can leapfrog because they're, they had that scale. They just show and, you know, it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if it's uh, how, you, you know, what the UI is or whatever. It's like you, you get a, you know, get a, a billion monkeys looking at something and all of a sudden it's, it can't create a, a symphony. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, so uh, that is a major, major player in AVOD that just happened basically overnight. Right. And uh, do you think they're going to change the name? It's like the, the name is so awful. The IMDb TV. Well, the reason they did it is because they already had that whole, that whole uh, database of, of IMDb and mm. they had some users there, 10 million users. And of course they were, I think, um, you know, more of the, the real cinephiles. And, and, and by the way, here's another tip. If you, it, you need that IM, your, your IMDb page to, to be just lock solid because that is the Bible. For I've, any been, I've been hearing that buyer. a lot. So it is like, the Bible. So like as opposed to just, you know, so, you, you know, you put up your trailer and your poster and your cast list. What are some other things that need to go up there? Well, you got, you, again, you got your best art. It's just, that is, you know, I was talking about how 
it's just a screening process before you even get to take a look at a trailer before you even get to take a look at a at a at a screening mm-hmm. to, to get a, a buyer of one of these platforms to look at it and they do look they at look IMDb. at imdb as the first screen that's what i look at as the yeah, first yeah. screen i mean it's like that's got that page has to sing if it ain't singing, then you're done. You're not even gonna get a second look. I'm talking mm-hmm. about not. I'm not talking about consumers. It's not a consumer. Yeah, I think that's the problem with filmmakers is they they look at stuff like this just strictly from a consumer standpoint. So they're like, oh, IMDb. Nobody looks at IMDb. It's a waste of time. It's a major thing within the industry. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not a consumer vehicle for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, only like diehard you know wannabe actors and and peep buyers and stuff. They're looking at that, but. But for people like me and for people who are who I'm selling to, they look at that number one, and then that right away. If it if, if it doesn't get what they you know what they're looking, I mean what what they're looking for, mm-hmm. then then you know over, <laughs> game over, right? And you you won't even get your trailer looked at, let alone you know let alone the long you know great story and synopsis this, and you got to see that. It's just looking at the IMDb. What's the packaging? Who's in it? Okay that deserves a second look at, okay, maybe I'll look at the trailer. Okay. Well, actually trailer's not bad. You know, it's a process. Mm-hmm. It's a process. And you know, it's just like dating. Yeah. You, you go mm-hmm. to first base and you go to second base and then you get the home run, but it ain't going right to home run. Yeah, and, <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> and IMDB, <laughs> IMDB is step one, uh, first base. First base. First base, you can, I mean, you're going to strike out if you can't even get your IMDB page right. And I, you know, I tell people like right away. And again, it's like, I'll just tell someone, like someone off the street, say, hey, I got a movie. It's the greatest thing. Okay, send me your idea. I'll look at it and say, oh, yay or nay. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> I, I could care less about, you know, some long drawn out story or whatever. It's mm-hmm. just, let me see his IMDb and I can take a quick, I mean, it's not a special skill. Right. You know, it's just, it's just from doing it thousands and thousands over in years. Yeah. Right. But that is, that is a key tip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a throwaway because it's true. No consumers looking at that. Nobody, no consumers are looking at IMDb to make a, a movie viewing decision. What are we going to watch tonight? Oh, let's go check out IMDb. No, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Right. That's true. Yeah. But, you know, if you want to, if you want your title to get, you know, picked up by a, you know, by a, a cable platform, by, you know, any of these, any buying platform, you got to have that thing like singing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and don't forget, I mean, IMDb, it's owned by Amazon, IMDb TV. It's owned by Amazon. Like it's it's like right. there's a direct correlation there between movies that are curated for IMDb TV. If your IMDb isn't happening, it's like you're dead. Oh yeah, absolutely. There, I mean, it's like here's the. I mean, buyers are looking are asking for the link. You know, when mm-hmm. I send them pages, like what's the IMDb link? I mean, that just shows like <laughs> they yeah. want to see it. And by the way, your movie better not be the same name as some other crappy movie from 30 years ago because it'll show up right there. And like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? So your name has to be, you know, has to pop up right by itself and not, you know, one of like John Smith titles all over the place. Right. So, I, you know, I have, to, I have a question about that because, I, you know, I know that technically you can do it. You can't copyright a title, but you're saying like if you have a you have a new title and you just you love this title, but you go to IMDb and you look it up and there's a couple of. Uh, identical titles from 30, 40 years ago that maybe weren't that big. Are you saying that's not a good idea to? It's to not use a good that? idea. Okay. It's not a good idea because you want a distinct name because all mm. of this stuff is so machine driven. You know, I had a, for example, I had a, I had a good move. Let me see if I'm inf- infringing on anything. <laughs> I can, Let's I just can put it. This I can way. think. I can think of one I did, but we, we, but I, I yeah, yeah. So here's a good. Movie. I mean, I had a really good movie that I just launched in in direct TV and in demand, and mm-hmm. good rom com had Corbin Burnson, had mm-hmm. Nancy Stafford, had Stacy Dash. You know, solid rom com. You know, family, good nature feel. Unfortunately, it had the same name as another movie that was kind of a not soft porn, but you know not mm, i got you and 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 you know what happened is the algorithms on the different channels are picking up and the wrong synopsis for the for the soft porn movie were actually showing up for mm. my family movie like what a disaster mm. and they're like john can you can you change i said i can't change the, the computers that's what they're pulling yeah right and that's outside my system because these are like these were like databases that are pulling outside the buying the, my buying platforms yeah yeah, yeah. Right. And like, I'm sorry, I, I have no 
interaction with these random, you know, computers that are yeah. just pulling that metadata in. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't fight the algorithm. You can't, and, you can't fight it. I mean, it's just, it's just like, can't you do anything? But I wish I could, but yeah. I, I can't even contact the person that, you know, at, at, at that piano who knows someone at that channel who will then like change their computers. I mean, that's yeah. where like it, the AI is scary, right? But to, yeah, to answer your question, change your name, make it, make it different because mm -hmm. that is a bad thing. And unfortunately, that's where computers are just like, you know, are ruling the, the system. Right. When you're evaluating distributors, you know, you, you got to really say, you know, what, what, you know, what are the true relationships? And then number two is like, how much time are you going to, like, what kind of time are you going to give me? I, I can't tell you how many clients that I have from big name places. And I actually have clients from Fox and from Disney, you know, where, you know, they have the Fox backing or whatever before but they were like on that totem pole they were so far down you know and the only time they got talked to was you know in the beginning when when you wanted to get the business and then seven years later when they wanted to renew the business in between it was like uh, <laughs> i'm saying that's a huge thing and that's why i have so many customers that that's the only interaction they've had and these are from major major from major studios mm -hmm. I, I don't want to name it because i don't want to you know malign it but that's a huge thing and then another huge thing that people don't realize is a lot of these platforms, they actually pay monthly, mm -hmm. right? And we're talking like, you know, monthly. Yeah. A lot of these distributors, I'm the one of the few, if any, maybe the only, I don't even know, but I actually pay that money, that monthly check. Really? Monthly. Yeah. So I, I don't just, know anybody. I, that I was in the shower today. Exactly. I was in the shower today. I'm like, holy crap. I just got paid. $500,000 for the month. Mm -hmm. If I took that $500,000 and I put it in a CD for three months and then pay, you know, make that money and then paid out the quarter, like every, that's a whole side business in itself. Yeah. I just realized that today, but I'm like, yeah. no, I, that's not, that's not that's, ethical. Right. You know? So yeah, I yeah. pay that monthly check, you know, within like five days of when I get it. Wow. And my customers are like, Holy crap. I didn't even know that this was, this was a monthly. So they're getting this monthly annuity and, mm -hmm. and, and not sitting there, not being withheld and it's significant money. And also, by the way, another major thing is, is I provide where a lot of people don't is like, you know, here's just one blanket, you know, I do buy title, buy platform, buy month. So, you know, mm -hmm. exactly where your money is coming from. And by the way, I say, you know, here is my home address. You, you watch me pull down the report. I got nothing to hide. You can watch me pull this report and you can shout. I invite you come in anytime you want. You know Love what I'm it. saying? You know, once you kidnap my kids, if you think that there's something funny going on, but right. you know, and you know, that's, I mean, that's just my pit, my, just my philosophy, right? You just, I, this thing has just been too, too good a blessing for me to like, you know, and you know, to, to mess with. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I invite anybody to come watch me pull it. If you have any questions, and that's why I take particular insult of like people feel, you know, again, they've been burned, you know. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I can understand that. But you know, that is a significant thing. I know other places like, hey, you're, you know, here's your digital, here's your DVD money and here's your digital money. You know, right. there you go. Right. No, but so mm -hmm. so that is a serious thing that I I haven't found anyone that's paying monthly. I think I'm like, well, yeah, I, as far as I know, I I've, I've never, that's pretty good. I, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that's a great, that's a great, uh, uh, perk. I, the only time I've ever got paid monthly for anything was Amazon. I was an early adopter oh, right, of right. Uh, prime video direct. So I did a couple of titles. I have nothing on there anymore. Yeah. That yeah. Every, myself. I, believe I've me. transferred it all over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and talking about Amazon, you know, like it, I didn't, I didn't charge any, I, I didn't charge anyone. I didn't even take, I say, look, you can put on Amazon prime yourself. There's no reason mm -hmm. that you need me to put it up. Right. So, right. so you, Oh, so you'll like work fractured like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you put it up yourself. You say, like, I don't deserve, you can do it. Right. So I wouldn't charge any clients. Gotcha. And then, but then after I had the INDB account and then I'm seeing mm -hmm. like the 10 X differential of like before and after I'm like, mm -hmm. well, what kind of risk you have? You're, you're making nothing on penny per hour. And I, and believe me, mm -hmm. you make your minimum 10x on what you get on the INDB. Yeah. And by the way, that's the way you make money. You have to collect everywhere you can. And there is mm -hmm. no cannibalization, you know, between these services. The market is mm -hmm. too early now. Yeah, yeah. The way I, I combat that is, you know, it's, it's, 
it's just, and everyone's behaviors are so entrenched. I mean, there's, there's universe, just isolated universes. Like I've had mm-hmm. titles on YouTube, you know, that have had 30 million fan, uh, you know, subscribers and, mm-hmm. and 200, 300 million views and translated to that. I mean, I, I, I was, Oh, this is going to be great. It's so great here. And they make like, they make dollars per month. Yeah. On, on 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 Ava Plus because they're completely separate universes, mm-hmm. right? And people are not shopping. You know, there's a big, you know, it's like, oh, I don't want to saturate the market. There ain't no saturation. It's like you want to be if you if you get someone to see your your content on on on, on a given day in a week, you're lucky mm-hmm. with the amount of product out there. It's like selling a widget at, 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 at Target in Milwaukee and selling that same widget, you know, at, at, at Walmart in, in Chicago. I mean, they're just like that. There is no, no one's shopping. I want this widget. Therefore, I'm going to go look. At, no one has time of the day to look at that, by the way. And by the way, the only things that they're looking for are mm-hmm. the big, big new releases. What's new this one this week? <laughs> Everything else is just an afterthought, quite honestly. Right. right? So in that afterthought, if you find someone, you know, then you got a sale, then you hit them and then you got a view, like take that every day of the week. And that's money in the bank. That's not a theoretical all cannibalization and cannibalization is, is a smart, rational way of, of, of being afraid to say no. (laughs) That's what cannibalization is, right? You want to think smart and that's from the studio days. It's like, you want to look smart in a meeting. Oh, I don't want to be cannibalistic. But yeah, you just don't want to sell and you're afraid to get fired if it don't sell. Right. What that is. The market is too young, too early to have any cannibalization right now. It's just collect every check, every dollar you can possibly get. Because Mm -hmm. you know what? Now that other inflection point has happened, if I have a title that's good enough to get a a SVOD exclusive title and Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll gate it out for exclusivity for two years, 18 months, a lot of times I'm saying no to those $30,000 checks, which are on the high end, because mm-hmm. I know I can make five times that collectively on a, these AVOD platforms. Wow. But so that inflection point is happening on certain genres for sure. You know, of course, first time filmmakers want to say, oh, I'm on Showtime, oh, I'm on Stars, or oh, I'm on Netflix. I have that, right? And that's a mm-hmm. cachet for getting more funding for another movie. But for those people that have been around the block and they don't care about the headlines and they know they can make five times more on that and that pays the rent, those are the customers that I want <laughs> because that's what, that's what pays. Right. <laughs> and that inflection point has happened as we speak. And it's nice. just going to get bigger and bigger because all of that money is going to original production. So folks, I'm doing some pretty cool stuff over on my Patreon. Uh, a few months back, as some of you might have saw here, I did this really extensive like four-part marketing plan. And every month over on my Patreon, I post that plan with updates. I update it monthly, adding new techniques or augmenting the old ones. And I'm also posting examples of all kinds of production and deliverable forms. And Patreon members have a chance to build up their own producer credits on my projects. I, you know, I release almost one a month. So check it out at www.patreon.com backslash jhorton. But whatever you do, keep making movies.